fresh off the back of the the budget, uh, uh, all of our financials um, this um, this this week, I guess it's Wednesdays we record, have been taking uh, uh, pretty much a battering. I guess is the only way I can describe it. Um, so one of the ones I was looking at um, was uh, legal in general. I used to own the stock Elgen. Uh, it's a um, life insurance come asset manager. Um, in the UK and uh, does some sort of pension risk transfer in America. Um, it was a stock that I bought in the pandemic. I bought it around two pound. I sold it at 260, 270 and 280. So I made quite a decent amount of money on that um, as well as the cracking dividend, which, you know, if you ever get chance uh, and legal and general dividend time, that is a fun time to be in our discord because uh, it's just go It goes absolutely nuts with people posting all of their, uh, all of the dividend income coming in. But anyway, having a quick look at it, it's about a 13 billion quid company at the moment. Uh, it's got a PE of about six and a half. Uh, it's dividend, which is about, is high. It's about 7.6%, but actually under its current financials looks pretty secure. Um, you know, all of this is with the caveat that it's a financial, everything can change in a heartbeat. Uh, we are in a very sort of uncertain time for financials. Um, the one thing I would sort of caveat on top of that is, is that its book value is about 1.26 times at the moment, which is uh, it's a tiny bit high for a company if you were looking for something really cheap. Um, but legal in general is getting to the kind of price where, um, you know, where I'd be interested in taking another look at it. It's uh, it's down about 8.5% today, Steve. Is it something you'd be thinking about getting back in? Probably not you use the expression back in which gives away that yes i also once owned this and i don't at the moment i sold it at about 255 i looked that up before i came on um here but the price wasn't really the reason i sold it i had a bit of a route through my portfolio because it was one of the earliest things i bought uh, for what it's worth when i started investing and built out a fair bit more and it's very difficult not to be up quite significantly on something you bought during the covid period right it doesn't actually matter whether you chose your companies very well or very poorly mm. especially if it's a fairly conservative small c conservative thing like uh, legal in general right so not a speculative tech thing like um peloton or whatever hard to not be up quite a significant amount still uh, at the time that i got rid of it but i went back through it and i was trying to figure out what i think it's competitive moat is because uh, insurance is a bit of a commodity business um legal in general is a well-known brand of a sort but i when i think about insurance i don't think about myself as massively brand loyal particularly i mean i want an established business that's going to still be there to pay out when the time comes to pay out on life insurance but I struggled to work out what I thought their real kind of advantage was, and therefore I got rid of it. I haven't managed to answer that question in my own mind yet, which is likely to stop me getting back into it. Um, that said, if I can get myself around that idea, would I be happy compounding my money at 7 8% or so uh, into the future? Yes, absolutely. Um, I can see why plenty of people own it. I wish them very well, collecting dividends off of that sort of thing. Um, the other thing about legal in general that i was thinking is that well two things actually sorry one is their commitment to their dividend is very responsible it's gone up pretty much every year but they did pause it during the pandemic stuff from what i remember uh, i don't mean stop the dividend i mean they just didn't increase it they kept it where it was to the disappointment of the markets at the time i think but that to me is encouraging that's a company that's thinking sensibly about what it can and can't afford um and then rising interest rates, Legal in general is a company that I think might do sneak well out of it. So they invest their insurance float in bonds, I think, as the bonds they have expire and they replace them with ones that have higher yields on them, I would expect them to do kind of reasonably okay in that because they'll just get a better result as a result of interest rates going up. Um, so lots to like about this company. I have nothing bad to say about it. The reason I'm unlikely to buy it back again, my stock, is because I'm struggling to pin down what its competitive advantage is over... Um, some of the others. I've tried to get Boss Hog uh, over on his videos to tell me a little bit. He talks about them a fair bit and Phoenix Group. And I haven't quite managed to pin down exactly for my own satisfaction what he sees as the, the real competitive advantage of these things. He talks about them being well run, but I, I'm just trying to get that clear in my own head before I stick my own money into it. Fair enough if he understands it. It's not quite there for me yet. Yeah, I guess the uh, insurance arm is kind of like the engine for these kind of companies, uh, and they win their business generally by scale. Um, you know, there is some skill in underwriting, but generally scale is the, the best way to hide your uh, your mistakes uh, with something like underwriting. Uh, 
the the jewel in uh, League and General's crown is probably the wealth uh, the wealth and pension risk transfer arm of their business, but that makes it exponentially more difficult to understand. Um, so Steve and I have actually written an episode on how to value an insurer, uh, but we think it perhaps might be a, a little bit dry. But uh, maybe if you are interested in that, get in touch with us and, and, and let us know because we we may release it and we we may release it as like a second midweek episode to apologise, <laughs> you know, so it doesn't doesn't cover any extra good content but um you know if that's something you're interested in l- let us know i mean when you start bolting on the additional businesses it does become somewhat more difficult you, you almost need a-, a degree to figure each one of them out but uh you're right in when you say that things are very commoditized in the insurance business and i think legal and general understand that as well and it's why they've sold off so many arms of the business they're like i don't want to compete for the, the cheapest car insurance because that- that's a nuisance but I think they're changing from being a broad insurer, a broad underwriter, to a specialist insurer. And that's quite interesting to me. And you hope that in specializing in specific areas that they can maybe shake a little bit of that sort of uh, commoditized uh, label and, and then maybe maybe be able to just get a little bit of margin here and there. You're right, though. Uh, everything they own will, in the floor especially, will be pretty much in bonds and as bond yields improve uh, that should be good for legal in general and it, but the opposite of that is this is also a place where uh, insurers haven't been for a very long time they they the people who know how to buy a uh, high yield bonds are probably uh, they're probably not working there anymore um so it will be interesting to see whether they can steer the ship through through this period obviously Nigel Wilson is an old CEO he's been He's been there quite a while. He's, I think he's 65 or 67 off the top of my head. So uh, whether he'll want to stick around through this period or whether whether he doesn't uh, is interesting. But I think Legal in General is an interesting business. I think it's getting to an interesting price. Um, one for the watchers. 